prices, but we're starting to see signs of the commodity cycle being on shakier ground. In the year ahead, if Indonesia wants to get to that uh, GDP target of, of 5% growth, what are the other levers that Indonesia can depend on? Is it consumer sentiment? Is it foreign investment? Or are there other things that perhaps in the economic picture that maybe our viewers are missing with regards to what could help Indonesia in the year ahead if this commodity boom starts to ease even more? Well, first of all, I think it is inevitable that we will see a slower GDP growth uh, next year because, uh, like it or not, the declining of the commodity and energy prices will hit our export. And then it is evident by the export growth. Uh, if you look at the number on uh, October yeah, or on November, the growth uh, was much slower compared to a couple months ago. And if you look at on the imported capital goods, uh, was also declined. So it means that there will be an implication that investment six months from now will slow down. So it is inevitable that Indonesian economy will face a, a sort of like a pressure on the economic growth and the economy will slow down. But compared to many countries, I think the impact will be relatively limited. Why is that? because uh, Indonesia is less integrated to the global economy. So when there is a negative a global shock, the impact is limited compared to country like Singapore. In Singapore, the export share to GDP is about 180%, whereas for the case of Indonesia, it's only 25%. But the other side of the coin, when the global economy starts to recover, probably re the recovery in Indonesia will take you know, will take uh, slower than other country. So if we cannot rely on the external uh, sectors, then we need to rely on the domestic economy. And we have this huge domestic market. But the problem is, as we discussed earlier, that I think Bank Indonesia need to raise the interest rate, which is, will have an impact on the investment. So the only option is the role of the fiscal stimulus. But as we know that next year, the government set the target of the uh, budget deficit less than 3%, uh, because it is stipulated in our law that by 2023, the budget deficit will be back to less than 3%. So the only solution for this is to ensure that people still have continued to have this buying power. The budget, the quality of spending will be a very important thing. The government has to, ex uh, to make sure that the budget allocation will have a high multiplier impact on the sectors or will boost the purchasing power. Yeah, and I think the, from the private sector, we will see that maybe they will delay the investment and consumers will become very defensive. So it is inevitable that the growth will slower, but I think we can still grow by about 45 to 5%. Hi, I'm Emily Tan, and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.